Hello users, Alexia UV Guide and today we're bringing you a new artist that is going to join me in our upcoming interior workshop 3.0 to assist me to help the students answering questions and uh, giving professional feedbacks. I'm uh, here viewing his website and uh, he wrote lately a book about photorealistic rendering which is uh, He's gonna tell us about it and um, this guy has got pretty pretty neat and professional works we can view on his uh, on his blog right here his name is uh, Jamie Cardoso and he does uh, mental ray and v-ray also and here we can see a lot of his really good-looking works with uh, really nice illumination and good attention to detail so he's a very potential candidate to join our instructor team and uh, become one of the professional instructors to help me assist you better okay so we're gonna have a conference call with him in a few minutes and uh, see how it goes do um, you do include and exclude things like glass and metal yeah and then I get like um, uh, uh, I normally uh, bring in into max the um, the um, photo reference of uh, you know the mood I'm going for mm -hmm. and I just start going adding lights opening the uh, the um, the Euro frame buffer from there I'm just like setting up the um, the skylight color make it made it invisible not to affect the speculars and the reflections and, and create the, uh, uh, um, the view ray Sun mm -hmm. go from there and this is like the first clay render normally yeah, so level one mm -hmm. yeah so you go from there get the lighting looking more or less all right uh keep going keep going so you just do some test renders just to make sure that the light is coming in you take the override just to get the first overall look of the scene and then you start um rotating the uh the the textures accordingly uvw mapping basically i'll start from clay render once I'm happy with the overall lighting, I uh, deselect the override, the uh, override, and then I'll start working on the textures, one by one, shaders, and so on. And then obviously, in the end, you start doing some region renders, tweaking with the material, the subdivisions, mm -hmm. just to, you know, to get everything looking all right. And then do the viewer edge for edges that are a little bit too, um, too. Um, too sharp, mm -hmm. just to bevel it. I can do that in, um, in, um, you know, with chamfer. Yeah. But sometimes I receive files that are huge from clients, and I don't have the time to go and chamfer everything. So I just at some, you know, sometimes I tend to just go with a Vero edge. But if I, if I have a, a time, I normally just chamfer them myself with, um, with editable poly. Mm -hmm. Then just start tweaking the uh, the, the V-ray sun subdivisions, you know, just to make sure that everything's looking alright. And then start um, tweaking with the radiance map setting, the interpolation, and you know, just to make sure that areas on, on the corners don't look as as patchy. And then increase the V-ray light cache, and then start adding the render elements. I normally use the, the multi mat as opposed to the V ray wire color. Yeah. Because the V ray yeah, yeah it, because the V ray wire color sometimes is a bit jag jagged. Mm -hmm. Whereas the yeah you know So you do like R G B for for each you yeah, do yeah, ID channels right. and then numbers yeah. for R G Bs. Yeah, and then you extract yeah. in Photoshop you extract the masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So you do two point two, right? The gammas yeah, 2.2, as you could see, see that 2.2 there. And then when you save, do you override it? 
or you do inside the V-Ray frame buffer, um, the gamma, the sRGB correction. Uh, I do inside, inside, inside Max. Mm -hmm. I just, I just save it out and I bring it in and everything looks fine like this. Yeah. Basically, after I bring everything is there. Right. And then, to, uh, yeah. And then, obviously, in here, this is where you see all the, um, all the, the uh, multi, multi yeah, all, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I layer them there. Yeah. So you go into channels and you extract R, G, yeah. and B out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th yeah. So this is the process, really. So and every single, um, every single um, uh, Photoshop folder, you get the levels or the curves, mm. whichever. And then you get the uh, the masks in there. Mm -hmm. right. And then after everything, I just put a chromatic aberration, a very subtle one on top. Mm -hmm. You know, just to make it a bit more photographic. Yeah. I mean. That is, that is that. This is exactly how I teach. So I want to show that we have the same way of thinking and the same way of working the yeah. files. Yeah. And uh, that's that's important to to show that you know we we, we match what we teach. We match our support. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the multi uh, mask, uh, yeah. it it does, you know, breaks down all those brings all those masks inside. And then you just extract, but you yeah you go to the channels and you extract. It's like if it's a complicated scene, it can be like maybe twenty layers of of RGBs, yeah. and each RGB yeah. will have three different masks yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right, okay. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much for for the time. Yes. Cool for sure. deal. All, All right, right, mate. Good talking okay. to you. Uh, yeah, have a nice weekend. You too. Let's talk later. Alright, speak to you later. Alright, bye. Thanks. Okay, bye. <laughs>